Jazz en las Rocas. El jazz no es para conocedores, es para quien lo quiere escuchar. Steve, yeah. thanks for being here. Oh, my really pleasure. Excited. My pleasure. <laughs> Steve Masakowski, guitar player, um, inventor. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say. Jazz player. Well, and, uh, I'm an educator too. Educator, uh, you know, I've been I've been teaching at the University of New Orleans for over 30 years. So, so that's a, that's a big part of my yeah, uh, teaching music. identity. Yeah, I'm the head of, head of the jazz program at the University of New Orleans. Whiskey you know. by Bush Mills. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you, Kimena. Wow. Thank you. Cheers. 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 And. Um, Ah. Sounds serious teaching music, jazz music in New Orleans in the cradle. Well, yeah, you know? yeah, it was it was uh, something that uh, I I had a, my colleague and uh, also a longtime friend Ellis Marcellus, who was the the the, the patriarch of the Marcellus family. Mm -hmm. We used to play duet uh, at a jazz club in New Orleans called Tyler's, okay. and uh, so we had a we had a really good relationship. And then he, when they started the program for Ellis. And uh, Ellis asked me to come on to teach the guitar players, you know, which I did. That was 1989. Okay. And then from there, I got a full-time position. And then, uh, to make a long story short, when Ellis retired uh, in 2000, 2000, I think he retired, um, uh, I sub sub subsequently uh, applied for the position and they did a national search and I became, got his position, you know, the head of the, uh, cool. the jazz studies program. So it's serious. It's yeah. a serious thing there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's serious and it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's the city of New Orleans, which obviously is very important to, New, to jazz. I mean, it's, yeah. it's known as the birthplace of jazz. So, yeah, so. The Dixieland and. Uh, well, everything, Dixieland, but New Orleans has got a lot more than just, just uh, yeah. traditional jazz. We call it, we usually call it tr traditional jazz, but yeah, but. Uh, Uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, lots of different types of musicians, lots of different types of music in New Orleans. Uh, but the, the thing about New Orleans is very special is the, is the spirit of making music is basically the same as it was when Louis Armstrong was around or when mm -hmm. jazz was really being formed, you know. And I think uh, New Orleans is important for young musicians that are trying to um, learn jazz because uh, you, have, you still have an opportunity to play and learn from playing with other people. And so New Orleans is really good for that. I find that amazing because uh, it's where it all started or one of the places where it all started and uh, 140 years later, it's still going on. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in, in different, for, you know, I have I, this, this, this an elderly uh, jazz musician, classical musician also. He was a colleague of Ellis Marcellus and uh, He asked a very special question because sometimes when we talk about jazz, jazz has so many meanings to different people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, usually when you think about New Orleans jazz, you think about traditional jazz yeah. and Bourbon Street and, and uh, you know, uh, Preservation Hall and things like that. But uh, in a modern context, you, you can have, you know, uh, like a group I play with called the Astro Project that's playing contemporary jazz, you know, mm -hmm. or you can have uh Afro-Cuban jazz, or you can have, you know, so many different ways. So the term jazz is, it's very hard When, when, when you say that, it means yeah. different things to different people. So exactly. this, this, uh, this person that was a colleague of Ellis Marcellus, uh, in fact, I, w I just went to uh, Ellis Marcellus' memorial because he, he, uh, he had passed away uh, uh, at the beginning of the COVID yeah. thing, okay. and, and so they weren't able to give him a proper memorial, and it just happened like two weeks ago. And uh, I remember talking to Roger Dickinson, who was like one of Ellis's, you know, childhood colleagues, you know, and, uh, he, and he was more of a classical trained musician. So he asked me one time, he says, well, do you think jazz is a noun or a verb? You know, and I think that yeah. I think the confusion comes in as people always think about jazz as being a thing. Exactly. That jazz is this. But no, it's, it's exactly. jazz is more a way of doing things. I like that. I, yeah, I yeah, like you know. That. In fact, that's what that's the early jazz. It was it, you. You were taking traditional uh, songs, dances, and, and things like that, and you would jazz them up. Yep. And you would make it. You rhythmize them. You know, it was just a real African in, uh, influence into the music. You know, and you you would make it swing and things like that. So, yeah, it makes it makes more sense to if that's you think about just the, just yeah. the word jazz. It, it might be a way of doing things. I really like to, yeah, 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 because it, it explains, that this is one thing that I say that it's <laughs> been on for 140 years, something right, like that. Right. That uh, it, That's a long time for a genre to be, yeah. um, to be happening. And right. as a verb, yeah. 
it makes sense. Yeah, and, it, and it's always evolving. Yeah, it's of always course, evolving. Yeah. Of course, you know, you have you have the different genres of jazz, like the early jazz and traditional jazz and things like that that people still play to this day and preserve that way of playing. But there's so many different categories of jazz. Uh, so, t so to describe anything to to a person that doesn't know anything about jazz, that it's a jazz group or it's a jazz singer or it's a jazz this. You really don't know. It has to be more descriptive. You have to say, hey, so you said uh, a swing era jazz musician, exactly. or he's a traditional jazz musician, or he's contemporary, or he's a you know uh, a free jazz musician. You know, so when, when, yeah, exactly. So if you, exactly. you put more descriptors in front of it, it kind of it kind of uh, makes it more. Uh, 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 you know, it makes it so that the, you know the, the person can understand more what you're talking about. Of course, makes sense. Well, now yeah. first question: yeah. uh, How did you get into music? Well, I was born and raised in New Orleans, uh, and um, it was all around. Yeah, it was all around. In fact, uh, it was very. You know, I, I grew up on the last house on Magazine Street in New Orleans, and Magazine Street was the longest street in New Orleans. It, it runs the whole length of the city. You know, and uh, in those days, there was no air conditioning. You know, New Orleans, uh, unlike, yes, unlike Mexico warm. City, it gets very hot there. You know, yeah. and there's no. We didn't have any air conditioning, and my mother. We had screens on the windows to keep the mosquitoes out. And mm -hmm. my mother, as a poor man's air conditioning, she would go out and hose the windows with water. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> we had technique. a fan that it would sort of bring the thing in. Yeah, but anyway, sort of a breeze there. The fact that we had the windows open all the time, uh, it uh, it you know it, it opened your ears to the streets, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it just so happened that three houses down from where we lived. The Paul Crawford Jazz Band used to practice, and Paul Crawford is, is a famous uh, traditional jazz band. And I used to I used to listen to him when I was a, a young kid. And I go on on the front porch and, and pretend I was playing trumpet with him and stuff like okay. that. You know, yeah, so I was hearing fun. them. You know, and, and of course, there's a lot of parade music. There's a lot a lot of stuff happening on the streets in New Orleans. Yes. And uh, so yeah, that was my early influences. My mother. Was would like to sing around the house, uh, so she she was a uh, she had lots of different records and things like that. So um, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's how I got into music. My, my my older sister was into jazz, and she would go see people like Ronnie Cole, and she would get the early like uh, uh, Dave Brubeck records, and she would get you know Astro Gilberto records. So I was listening to that stuff as she was playing, even though she was you know. Uh, Several years older than I, you know, so I was just listening okay. to what she was doing. So I would listen to that and hear that was the guitar. 60s, around the 60s, yeah, the, the yeah, 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 right, yeah, 60s, like yeah, that. yeah, because I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was a, she was a big influence because she would bring home these hip records, <laughs> you know, like Illinois, Illinois Jacquette and uh, you know Tom Jobim and uh, Dave Brubeck and all these kind of things. So. Uh, and especially with the, the Brazilian music, uh, I really fell in love with the guitar players on, on the, uh, you know, Bossa, Joao Gilberto, Bossa and, you know, yeah, yes. Bossa Nova and hearing the guitar, I, just, I was really drawn to that. So yeah, I, I started uh, listening to music very young and, and uh, being influenced by people who were in, in my family and also uh, people, uh, musicians are in and around the world. Was there any musician in your family? Uh, not professionally, no, okay. except my mother. Semi-professional. She would she would sometimes sing on the radio. There was an old radio program, and uh, she would sing on the radio. And uh, yeah, so but and she was she was very musical, and she liked to dance and stuff like that. You know, everybody in New Orleans likes to dance. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta survive, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So but, when did it came uh, became more serious and professional? Well, for me, you know, it became like when I was getting more in my early teens, and uh, you know, it was like well, it was hip to be. A guitar player, a right. bass player, whatever, and, and I got they into a, a, a rock and roll band called Cream, you know, and we were playing songs like that, and and I was actually playing bass, electric bass at right. the time, you know, but I was in my in my teens, and and uh, I was listening to a band called Cream, mm -hmm. which was uh, Eric Clapton and Jack Bruce or whatever, you know, and. Um, that kind of let me, the Jack Bruce and, and Ginger Baker, who are the, 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 the drummer and the bass player in that group, were actually jazz musicians, and they were playing rock and roll music. So when Jack Bruce made a record called uh, um, Things We Like, and it was a jazz record. It had John McLaughlin on it, and it had all, no these, all these great players, and, and, and Jack Bruce was playing upright bass. I said, wow, what is that? I didn't even know what an upright bass was. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's playing upright bass, and he's usually normally playing rock bass in a, in a, in a, in a like, uh, rock yeah. and roll setting, you know? And uh, so that brought me into like this whole world there, and then 
as I got a little older, I got uh, into, I wanted to start uh, composing songs. I started to uh, outgrow the rock and roll influence and I started to get more into the jazz world. And uh, uh, I, I started listening to this guy named Larry Coriel. And he was a really, really infamous uh, uh, jazz guitar player. One of my, probably my first jazz guitar influence was Larry okay. Coriel. And then from there, I felt like I, you know, every, everything I've done so far has been self-taught. I didn't really know much about the guitar or theory or anything like that. So I, I tried to seek out uh, some, uh, you know, help in that in, in that era. And um, I went to a guy named Hank Mackey, who was like the yeah. guitar guru. Okay. You know? And I went to Hank Mackey to study, and uh, he. You know, turned me on to some of these records like Joe Pass and Wes Montgomery and Pat Martino, and that just really opened my whole brain. It was like, man, I didn't know the guitar could be played that way. You know, so it was that's that, that was the main. I guess when I was getting serious is when I started. Taking How old were you? Uh, that was about 17 years old, I think. Okay, so I guess you uh, when you started playing guitar, you found out you you had a knack for it or something. Because... Yeah, I seemed to be pretty good at it. You know, because I had, I had. When I, even when I went to Hank Mackey, he, he was really he was really impressed that I had I had learned all the stuff off of Larry Coriel Re, records. I was transcribing things by ear and things like that. At 17, Which, that's yeah, well, exactly. you know, well, it's yeah, you know, it, it's it, that's and that's an important concept for jazz musicians is to learn things by ear. You know, uh, not why you know, would that not, be? Yeah. Well, it's just that's just the tradition. Mo, mo, a, lot, a lot of the early jazz musicians were couldn't read music or didn't read, chose not to read music. And they learn things by hearing other people play, uh, and that, that's a very important concept for uh, for learning music in in that uh, genre. You know, it, you don't learn music by reading notes necessarily. Now we all have to read notes, obviously, but 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 the, 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 uh, jazz musicians just have to have well developed ears, and that's okay. one way to do it is to listen to records and pick off what they're doing. I you know? find out. That it's really interesting. I haven't talked about that here because, uh, of course, as a musician, you have to know how to read, or at least something. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. But when you're up in the, on the stage, yeah, and uh, something can vary, something can go in another way, yeah. and then you can grab it, know what's happening right. by ear. That's well, when the, probably the magic happens. Well, yeah, that's the in jazz. I mean, that's the that's the, the magic formula with jazz is that you. you We take what I call, we have this, these core songs that we play, you know, melodies, and then we improvise mm -hmm. on the bed of the song. But in jazz, it's like not only is the soloist improvising, everybody in the band is improvising. So the bass player, the drummer, and we're hearing and we're reacting and we're, you know, so it's, it's, it's a collective improvisation on a very structured form. And I'm thinking more like in the, you know, the bebop uh, realm right. as opposed to like free jazz form or whatever, you know. So, okay. yeah, so it's important to, to listen to what everybody's doing, not just yourself, you know, to listen to, to things and to become a, a great improviser. You know? Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah. next question would yeah. be, um, any recommendations for someone who's, who wants to get into jazz? I think it, you know, first of all, they, sh they should, you know, they should try to define what they what they think jazz is. <laughs> that's uh, good advice. Yeah, yeah you know, because there's Kenny G and a lot of people, <laughs> some of the jazz musicians don't think that's jazz, you know, and then there's, there's you a know, lot of people just think to give you jazz. a perspective, some of the older jazz uh, historians don't think anything past 1930 is jazz. It's jazz, okay. Yeah, so I mean, they're, 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 you know, so you have to, you have to decide so, what Duke you Ellington like. Duke Ellington is too avant-garde yeah. for that, or So what? first of all, you just, you just <laughs> listen to uh, lots of things, and it, there's so many ways of listening to music now um, that's, that's you know, available to everybody, you know, and then find out what, first of all, what turns you on. And then just try to like try to find the people within that genre. If you're a guitar player, like to me, you know, Peter Bernstein is like one of the greatest jazz guitar players now, a young jazz guitar player that's, that's sort of playing in the, in, in the, uh, uh, the uh, style of Wes Montgomery and people like that, you know, he's really, so he's like one of my favorites I like to listen to. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And as someone, may, may, this may be redundant, but someone that's uh, doing something right now that it's interesting. Yeah. To well, he's 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 alive and well right now for sure. You know, I think that um, it might be interesting not not to toot my own horn, but I've been playing with a band uh, in New Orleans uh, for over 40 years. It's allowed to. Yeah. You know. <laughs> good, good good and uh, we're yeah. kind we're kind of like considered the. Uh, the Rolling Stones of jazz, you know, <laughs> in New Orleans, you know, it's the it's the oldest 
existing uh, contemporary New Orleans jazz groups. So we play lots of original music uh, and lots of music, but it's, it's all steeped in the tradition of New Orleans, the rhythms and the blues and things okay. like that. So we write with, with that because we, we all live there and we're, we're just naturally influenced by that. So that band is called the Astral Project. The Astral Project. Astral Project. So if you, you can, you can uh, check that out, everything's on YouTube. All my, I have, I have, uh, you know, probably about ten CDs out. So you can, if on YouTube, if you if you look up my name, you, you'll you'll come up with lots of different uh, uh, things that people can listen to, and then just follow your heart. You know, if 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 you like, if that resonates with you, then then starts find out what's what uh, category of jazz that is, and then see if you can find out other other uh, musicians that you you know that uh, might resonate with you. Nice, yeah. good advice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, changing subjects, uh, I read you were an inventor uh, as oh. well as an educator and musician. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, tell me something about that guitar. That yeah, you yeah. Did. Well, that was, you know, it was really, um, I guess I, I was playing with some of these uh, saxophone players like, or, you know, horn players like Tony DeGrotti, and I always loved the, the way the horns could just like wail. They could, they could play these long notes and just scream and stuff like that. And I said, Man, I wish I could do that on the guitar, you know, because once you hit the note, the guitar dies out. So, yeah. um, my only solution to that was to be able to see if I could I could uh, integrate the guitar with synthesizer. And this is very early. This is like in the '80s, you know, and this is before MIDI. Uh, and so I was determined. I had this synthesizer. It was called the Moog uh, yeah, Opus, course, yeah. Opus Three. <laughs> and uh, a relic no, one. yeah, a relic now. It's uh, uh, but uh, there was no uh, MIDI at that time. So. I built this instrument out of wood, and but it had at every place where you would push your finger down, there's a button, or you know, I, I call it a key, a key, and uh, and and uh, I soldered it all together and glued it all together, and I used to attach it to the my regular. I play seven string guitar, and I attached it so it looked like a double neck instrument. And I actually used a telephone cable because I needed so many wires for every <laughs> for every switch, and I soldered that to every key on the keyboard. You know, seven keys per fret. Well, yeah. th this is actually a seven string guitar, but it's it's it it, it, it it's arranged because I've been playing seven string guitar for that long. But uh, for every every place where you would you could possibly put your finger, there's a separate key for each one, which which opens up new possibilities because on the guitar. You can only play one note per string. Yeah. But on the guitar, you I can, can play multiple notes on one string. Okay. Because they're all they're all completely independent. You know. So uh, I was able to do some harmonies and things like that on the guitar that I could never do on the guitar. You know. So it, it opened up some possibilities in, in, in that respect. But uh, it's uh, yeah, it was it, it was interesting. I wish I had the the, the money and the means to to to, to have taken it to to the higher level now. People have ha, have done that. Uh, there's a, I think there's a there's a company called Zetar that finally came out with something that's more closely related to what I was doing, you know. But uh, I didn't have the means or the you know I, I started you know filing for patents and things like that. And I think in Wik Wikipedia that they actually gave me. You were limited by the technology of your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now <laughs> things have yeah things have really progressed. And now guitar players have full access to any synthesizers, and uh, you know so it's 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 a lot easier for us yeah. now to have access to that. But yeah, and with computers. Yeah, can change but I could you know I could play notes on it. I could use the, the slide you know, the bend pedal and you know, do all kind of like weird things and stuff like that. So it was, it was neat. It, was, it allowed me to do things that I couldn't do on the guitar, which was really That's cool. amazing. So you really made music your, your life, not only by playing, oh, yeah. but uh, yeah, inventing, yeah, 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 teaching. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, so somebody said that, you know, you don't, you don't find music, music finds you. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I've always been interested in music and uh, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to play. It makes me happy that my kids are into music. And you know, we didn't push our kids into music at all. They just decided they wanted to do that. And of course, it's very special for me to be able to play with my family. That's re really cool. That's something you know? uh, a lot of parents yeah. won't ever get to. Yeah, yeah. It's and that special it, connection. And they're just they're often doing their own thing. It's just special when we get together to do our own. You know, and play as a family. Uh, I think early on, and they both went through the University of New Orleans too, but early on I was, you know, of course, giving them direction, musical direction, and right, giving yeah. them criticism and things like that. And now the tables have turned. Uh, nice. <laughs> now, they now, give they me, give. now they give me the criticism. <laughs> it says a lot of things about you that you, they, they 
play yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. Some of us will never yeah, play yeah, with yeah. Well, they, they were cheap. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now it's the part where our special bartender. No, oh, okay. And uh, right. you trade anecdotes. Oh, you have an anecdote? Okay. Well, I was trying to find something funny. funny. Uh, there's, 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 a, there's a musician that I've been playing with all my life in New Orleans named David Torkinowski. And his name David is it's funny because his name last name is Torkinowski. My name is Masakowski. So we all, we're always getting mixed up. Okay, of course. Yeah. So we were in uh, we're somewhere in, in on a on a tour in Europe or whatever, and uh, this is the famous uh, 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 harmonica player Toot, Toot Steelman. Okay. And I, I think I was playing with Diane Reeves at the time or whatever. And, and anyway, Toot nice. Steelman saw our set, you know, and um, so he saw us play or whatever. And then later. Uh, David went to see Toots play at a club, you know, and then okay. and Toots got on the microphone and said, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you so, this is a really great musician and, uh, that, that I saw him play the other day, really special uh, musician. Uh, uh, and I'd like to ask him, uh, David, was that a seven-string guitar you were playing? <laughs> so he thought, no, David was, you know, so we, we constantly getting, you know, getting, uh, getting mixed up like that, so. Okay, that's a good one. That's uh, someone beat. <laughs> it's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but it could be. well, in, <laughs> in all these episodes, I always tell a story about whiskey. Uh huh. Um, whatever. And um, right now, I have a story about a particular whiskey, but I, um, I can't say it's the name of the whiskey because it's not. Oh, it's. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, it's kind of tough, but I can say that. This particular whiskey uh, was the signature whiskey of a jazz musician. Oh, and mysterious. Then, yeah, oh. mysterious. Um, called Frank Sinatra, but I'm not gonna say the name okay. of that whiskey. Maybe okay. you know it. Maybe you can know. say that we can't. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not ringing a bell right now, but that's that 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 doesn't mean that it's, it's not special. Well, know. it's gonna be on screen. Just if yeah. you're yeah. listening in Spotify. Switch to you YouTube and right? you'll, you'll, you'll <laughs> Okay. Um, well, this but what we prefer Bushmills, of course, yeah, obviously. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Bushmills. Time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this uh, this brand of whiskey, the the whiskey um, the distiller, learned how to distill at age six. Oh, really? Uh, really young. Wow. <laughs> six. <laughs> learn <how> to, <laughs> fast learner. Yeah. Learning by a Lutheran, I think, a Lutheran minister. Oh, really? How to make whiskey, and then wow. he passed the recipe on to his children. And wow. Family industry. Well, to start the making school. whiskey at the age of six. That's 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 a new. I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's so. Wow. <laughs> he wasn't legal to drink it for a long. No, he couldn't drink oh, it, but he could make. It. He could make it, but he wasn't allowed to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Good, cool. Oh, Google but very yeah, good. Google good. Google that was that. good. Bush Mills was made but for. Bush Mills, yeah. <laughs> we prefer that. It's delicious. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Irish yeah it is. It's really, it. really so, very good. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, Jimena. So, oh, really? um, yeah. Steve, Steve yeah. Sakowski, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Lovely so to hear your story. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to listen. Yeah. To you live. And, yeah. Uh, Thank yeah, I love this. Love the city, and I can tell this is this club has a really nice vibe to it. Thank you very much Thank again. You. Cheers, cheers, and cheers. Uh, see you soon. Okay. Oh. Okay. And uh, where can we find you, your projects, uh, social networks? Well, whatever. You just, you, look, just Google my name, and everything will come up. You know? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, Steve Masakowski with yeah. a K yeah. and a W. Right, right. Uh, Google it. Google it. Yeah. Yeah, he's famous then, still. Uh, my name will come up after my daughter's name because she's more famous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And I right. uh, will listen to your daughter next. All right. Next yeah. episode. Fantastic. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Síganos ya sean las rocas en todas las redes. Nos vemos a la próxima. Ya sean las rocas. Agradecemos a nuestro patrocinador Bushmills.